And people in government are pretty upset that I talk to, too. I think the mask is coming off here. And so a lot of this may just be bluster. I mean, it's going to get really well, obvious if so, they indict every member uh, of the Tea Party. It, it could be. I'm told that today I was told that, you know, you never know what people tell you. They're trying to plant ideas or stories or they got an agenda. But I was told today something that uh, sort of surprised me, and that is that there's a tremendous amount of opposition within police forces themselves to this militarization of the police, to, to these brutal acts, and um, that um, the situation is, is not quite what it looks like on the surface. Now, if this is true- no, I agree if, with that. If this is true, it's good news. Now, if they're gonna start indicting uh, attorney generals of Texas and the governor and, and uh, ruining U.S. senators, uh, people will see that. And you got to remember, too, the polls, Alex. You remember uh, not long ago, we saw the poll that 62% of Americans favored a third party. This is brand new. We saw that 75% of Americans thought that government at all levels was corrupt. This is brand new. So if these polls are correct. And so uh, perhaps you've been successful in waking people up. Well, I think we all have together. Uh, you certainly and others get credit. They see the polls as kind of the tip of the spear because they know they're for real as well. But what do you expect, though, with the history of hubris and, and being in Washington? I mean, obviously, we weren't perfect then, but compared to the Soviet Union, I'd say we were the good guys. And you were there, Reagan, tear down that wall. And that did put pressure on the Russians. It did help reform things. And we now see a shift where it's like Putin's like Reagan saying to us, stop being tyrants and saying, look what you've done in the Middle East, funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda, shame on you. Just, it's like the emperor's new clothes. Putin really is being a statesman. What do you expect them to do now to try to counter that? I think the CIA will try to assassinate him. I think Putin's in substantial danger of assassination. <clears throat> That's what I think. Um, and... Um, I hope he stops walking around the streets unprotected. <laughs> and no American president can do that. Uh, only Putin. <laughs> well, he's not a coward, that's for sure. Well, I mean, the people there don't want to kill him. <laughs> so I, I think that uh, Putin's in danger of assassination by the CIA or some, or, or some rogue group. They're probably rogue groups that are far worse than the CIA. Of course. And, and uh, we just don't know about them. And so um, uh, I think they here uh, they will continue to persecute whistleblowers. Uh, uh, they will continue to move in the direction that criticism of the government is uh, uh, illegal. And they'll first say, you know, you're, you're a domestic extremist, and, and, and they'll find somebody that's easy for people not to like and go along with and then the next guy will uh, not quite be so easy to dislike and then finally they'll get whoever they want that's the way it goes exactly know, it so I, I think that is in in motion but i do think now there's more awareness um i don't know to what um agreement they would be able to bring military officers. Some of them I know are useless and rotten and no good, and others uh, have integrity. So it's not, uh, it's not a clear open road for them. I think you're right that, they, that they're going in this direction. Um, but whether they can pull it off, I don't know. I think they're gonna have, have more problems than they can handle. For example, the economy. I, I can't really stay the whole hour. But I understand. Yeah. They told me an hour before. I know you got to go. Can, can you do 10 more minutes to tell us about the economy? Yeah, let, let, because that's another problem for them. And all of these things can overwhelm them. And uh, I mean, the thing can collapse out from under them. I mean, the, the economy, you know, look, it's a house of cards. We've talked about it. They've kept it up uh, by creating money to sustain all the bad investments the banks made. Uh, but the economy itself is not growing. 
re, uh, retail sales aren't growing. Real consumer incomes are declining. They're, they're, they're going down. Uh, there's no basis for the economy to grow. They create the image of success by manipulating the figures and the way they measure unemployment, the way they measure inflation. And so they, they're trying to create a, a matrix, an image of success that's not there. Um, the, um, the dollar is, uh, it, it's, um, it's rigged. It's the only way it can stand. It's rigged because of the Japanese print to support it, the European Central Bank prints to support it. Uh, but now look what's happening in Europe. I mean, they're overwhelmed with their own sovereign debt problems. Now with millions of refugees. Well, we're going to break. We'll come back and do five minutes on the other side and let you just focus in on a briefing, you know, as a, a former top economist in the White House on oh. where you see this going. And I want to ask you when we come back that other key question, what does it signify that other central banks and now the Chinese are not buying as many U.S. treasuries? Um, they're saying the economy is not as good as it was previously. I want to find out from you as an economist where you think the real state of the U.S. versus the global economy is and what you expect to come next. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts uh, right. will do about five, six minutes with us on the other side of the break. Uh, his website is paulcraigroberts.org. And then I'm going to get into... A bunch of the election news, a bunch of the Europe news, Second Amendment news. It's all coming up. Stay with us. We are here live 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central now. We've added an hour. And, of course, we have the nightly news, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. And as gloomy as some of what Dr. Roberts is talking about here, uh, the good news is the world is waking up to the criminals that have basically occupied our government and taken it over. So I would say, in a way, the fact that the empire is in so much trouble uh, is a positive thing. But looking at what's happening in the economy, how long can this QE go on? Dr. Roberts, what's the real state of the economy? Well, it's, it's in a shambles. Uh, there's, no, there's really no economy here. It hasn't been for some time. You know, we've talked about it so many times. First, they offshored all the well-paid manufacturing jobs. Then they offshored millions of the uh, professional uh, skill jobs, the kind that are exchangeable, like uh, software engineering, information technology. So we now have had uh, several classes come out of universities, graduates, and there's no employment for them. And they can't form households. And they go back and live in their childhood rooms at home, or they go to their grandparents, uh, or they uh, pool what little resources they have from being waitresses and bartenders. And and the share rents. I mean, you know, you can't really have an economy if the young can't get a foot in. So it's there's, there's no economy here. It's really uh, it's really running on accumulated savings of the past, primarily those of the older generation, who are at the point where they have to help uh, their children and their grandchildren. So there's no economy here. Uh, there are no jobs. Uh, the jobs are increasingly part-time, um, low-paid, no benefits. Uh, it, it's a shambles. You, if you don't have good connections, you can't get a job. Not one that would permit you to form a household and have an independent existence. And, and we can see this, Alex. You know, you, you have now the situation where there are all these young women who can't pay the student loans, they can't pay their college tuition, their car payments, their rents, and they advertise themselves that they're available to older men who have resources. So this is a sign of a third world country. The United States is a failed state in every respect, in every respect. There's no strength here anywhere, except in these, in whatever this deep government is that's destroying the Constitution and everybody's rights. There's no other strength. And so the whole thing can just collapse out from under them. Uh, there's no strength in the West. There's no strength in Europe. The strength is in Russia and China. It's the only place that's in the strength. And so we will try to destabilize those countries. As I said earlier, I think uh, Putin is on uh, due for an assassination attempt. And the United States now is discredited in the eyes of the world. 
It's discredited with its own vassals. I saw the other day that Australia, a total U.S. puppet state, total puppet, it refused to participate in the American naval operations in the South China Sea. So people are looking at this and saying, well, this, is, this doesn't work for us anymore. We don't want to be drawn into a conflict with Russia and China. The United States is no match for the combination of Russia and China. No matter what Obama was bragging about at the UN, we have the most powerful military, we have the most powerful economy. Balderdash. When, the, when Russia hit those uh, Islamic State targets with those sea-launched cruise missiles from the Caspian Sea, that sent fear all up every European spine. They didn't, no one knew they had these weapons. With these types of weapons, an anti-ballistic missile defense is worthless because it can't shoot down cruise missiles. Russia doesn't need ICBMs to take Europe out. Europeans know that. They have no protection whatsoever. If, if they're forced into conflict with Russia, they'll disappear instantly. They know that. So the whole thing has changed. I think the change came with Obama's speech on the 28th of September. He said, we've had it with you. That's it. Two days later, as I said, he's taken over the war in Syria. What can we do about it? Nothing. Push the button. So I think the economy here is, there's no economy. It's not coming back. It's probably going to go down further. It could, something sharp could happen in which the whole thing just implodes, you know, like a controlled demolition of a building. Or it could just be a long, slow, drawn out process where all the savings in the system are drawn out. People become progressively poorer year by year, except for the 1%, which sits there accumulating whatever surplus is left in the system. This doesn't work. It doesn't work. It can't work. It's ignored. All the real problems are ignored. And so they're not addressed. If they're not addressed, they can't be fixed. They, they fester. They get worse. They, and they blow up. And the system breaks down. I think that that is the most accurate forecast of what's going to happen. In the meantime, yes, they may oppress all of us who speak out. They may well do that. You know, it's always been the tendency to shoot the messenger. Shoot the messenger. You're a messenger. I'm a messenger. Shoot them. And that and and they've got the power to do that. Yes. So, but these are the risks you take. You know, I mean if they can shoot you wherever you are. <laughs> You, where can you go? In fact, the way that the Americans are becoming hated all over the world, you're not safe anywhere. The people there will kill you. Where can you go? You could go to Russia if you learn the language. <laughs> Probably you'd be safe there. But not necessarily. They, they, the CIA may send one of these checking terrorists after you. Or I mean, you know, Americans aren't safe anywhere. It's not just that not safe from your own government. But, you know, if the CIA wants to get you, it's easier for them to kill you in Mexico than here. That's right. So, you know, the notion of getting out and getting away, uh, you know, you can shut up, make an apology, but other than that, you're in it. Oh, and, I know. I mean, I'm in it and I'm never leaving. I was just bemoaning. <laughs> just remember that statement, you know, a coward dies many times, a brave man dies but once. That's a much better way to go. Oh, I totally agree. And I've, they come, I'm glad you stay here. Worry don't worry about it. We're in a fight. I, look, if, if you're in a war, you, you're going to be killed any minute. And you don't say, well, damn, I might be killed. Let's think I'll go home. You, just, <laughs> you got to fight. That's my view. So I think you need to keep telling people you don't need to exaggerate. You don't need to go beyond the evidence. You don't need to go up the wall, you can just tell them the facts of what's going on and, and just come back to the two points I made. Look what Bush did. Look what Obama did. We can put you in definite detention 
despite the Constitution. We can murder you despite the Constitution. If you can do that, that's a police state. 